thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Maloney. I'm one of the um, system health and wellbeing project managers working at NHS Greater Manchester. I work within the health and wellbeing team um, and one of the work streams that I work on is menopause and menopause awareness. Um, I put this presentation together um, as an internal resource for staff really, um, just to again raise that awareness to talk about it um, with colleagues, with line managers um, and it, it, was a, it was a huge success so it's kind of continued on really. So Dawn's, uh, Dawn Guest is here with me. She's one of the project support officers within our team and she's going to help me with some of the, the slides and the techie bits. Um, we do want to use um, Menti. So if you've got your phone to hand and just type in www.menti.com, um, you'll be able to contribute to uh, the, Menti, the Menti meter. So the session um, is going to be cut down a little bit. So um, it will be kind of a bit of a whistle stop tour if you like. So it's why we want to talk about menopause, uh, what menopause is, why it happens and when, some of the signs and symptoms, um, managing menopause. Uh, there's some discussion points which I'm not sure with the time frame that we'll have a lot of time for but would welcome any contributions in the chat where more information is available and how you can support your colleagues either in the workplace and or have those open honest conversations about menopause. Um, please contribute at whatever level is is right for you. I'm not a clinician. Um, I'm just trained in, in giving this train the trainer kind of menopause awareness. So for some of you, it might be nothing groundbreaking or nothing that you don't already know, but um, just to to have the opportunity to revisit some of this stuff. Um, if you could have your cameras on, it's always nice to see people um, not just talking to um, initials on the screen. Um, yeah, use the chat. We'll be using Menti um, and I think we'll go. Yeah. Can we um, have the mentee up now, um, please, Dawn? And the first question on, oh, we got the code. Yeah, the code is 1778-8108. I'll just pop that in the chat and then you can see it. It will, ah, there you go. 1778-8108. Perfect. So we'll go to the uh, first question. So um, just as a bit of a, a temperature check, really. Um, no pun intended, given the, the heat that everybody's struggling with. Uh, what is the average age uh, that menopause happens? Just checking. How many people have we got in this room, Kerry? Just so I can keep an eye on who's contributing to Menti, that's all. You've got 54. 54, right. 16 have contributed. Please use the chat function. If you can't get into Menti for whatever reason, use the chat just to be able to, um, to contribute. As I say, I'd like to make the the session as interactive as possible, really. Perfect. Thanks for that. OK. 50, 46. 45, brilliant. So the, the actual age is 51. That is the average age. <clears throat> that menopause occurs so not far out there was some someone in there said 51 so well done uh three symptoms of menopause can you list three symptoms of menopause that's night sweats mood swings loss of libido yes swings hot flash hot flush absolutely <laughs> we like flashes as well. Weight gain, twisting, mood change, vaginal dryness, unable to sleep, memory loss, aches and pains, anxiety. Yeah, it's a delightful time of life, isn't it? <laughs> I 
low mood night sweats yeah and with this weather as well that's not a good thing is it ladies what creases is in the now do we have any um males on the call um Kerry? Perfect. It's a really good question. I'll have a little look. Thank you. OK, we can move on. But yes, absolutely. Every one of those things, ladies. Yeah. Um, how long on average do menopausal menopausal symptoms as opposed to hot flushes, I would say. So on average, how long do menopausal symptoms um, last? We need to change that question, really. Five years. Seven years, five years, two years. Yeah, so the average is is seven years and can go as long as 14 years. So, yeah, quite a long time. Midlife weight gain is caused by menopause. True or false? Controversial one, this, guys. Seems like forever, I can imagine, Susan, yeah. Eight years, Bernie, yeah. True, yeah. It's actually false. Um, <laughs> and the reason is it's all of those other symptoms that you just listed before, which have a negative impact on lifestyle, which therefore... Um, stop us doing the things that we kind of do in terms of physical activity having the motivation to do things having the motivation to eat well to um to get our regular sleep and things like that so it is actually false is there's a much bigger picture what percentage of women say menopausal symptoms have a negative impact on their work And imagine it seems like 66%. It is actually 44%. So it's not, it's almost half. You know, it's still very high percentage. Okay, and then as an employee, how likely are you to say you're not fit to work today due to menopausal symptoms? Very unlikely unlikely likely yeah unlikely yeah and I, and this this is the issue isn't it it's how we as women are fighting to break that taboo when actually we're not coming forward ourselves and saying actually I can't come to work today because I'm being affected by menopausal symptoms so yeah chicken and egg scenario I'm afraid isn't it how confident do you feel about having a conversation with your manager about menopause? Not really confident. Confident, good. So there's a there's, there's a mixture there. Not so sure, confident. Some not confident at all. Um, yeah, hopefully by the end of the session, we'll have a little bit more confidence about that. And if you could implement one thing to improve menopause in the workplace, what would it be? Awareness from all, understanding. Flexible working, yeah. Temperature control, yeah, absolutely at the moment. Air con, air conditioning, flexible working, more fans, flexibility, access to help sooner, yeah, understanding, more open, compassion, absolutely. Support, more awareness. Hot water bottles. Ah, okay, fair enough. Aircon, wider understanding. 
Yeah. How is everyone voting? I can't see to do this. What's more working? More open like empathy. Talking about it. Right. That's perfect. OK. Um, that was just to kind of get everybody settled into the kind of the, the mood of the session, really. So, Don, can we just put the, um, the slides back up? And then just going to look at what can be done um, to help in the workplace. Eight out of ten um, women are menopausal in work. How to normalise the conversation and, and break the taboo. And while we're talking about um, men menopause within Greater Manchester. OK. Um, Four compelling reasons, really, why we need to talk about it more openly um, within work is that um, menopausal women are the fastest growing workforce demographic in the UK, with over 4.4 million women aged over 50 in work. And according to the Faculty of Medicine, nearly eight out of 10 women are menopausal and they're in work. Many of them are in leadership roles, um, are in are key employees. And one quite shocking statistic from that research is that one in four women consider leaving work because of menopausal symptoms. If we lost a quarter of our female workforce within that age group, can you imagine what that would do to the health and social care workforce? That would be non-existent. Um, it's quite shocking, really. And that is why we need to raise this awareness and we need to kind of have those more open supportive honest conversations and provide a culture where women do feel supported there's a business case um estimated cost of replacing employees around thirty thousand. we need to help reduce absenteeism reduce presenteeism when women are dragging themselves into work and um, when they're not feeling fully focused or they're trying really um to mask some of the symptoms that are showing up for them or what's going on for them and they're not taking the time to tackle um the issues that they're faced with and that's just not sustainable at all we have a social responsibility to to care for our workforce. It's the right thing to do. We want and should um, support our colleagues um, through this time in their life. Um, and we want to enable our colleagues to perform at their best and in turn increase um, positive patient outcomes as a result of that. We all know that looking after our staff and valuing our staff's well-being has a positive impact on patient care and patient outcomes. There's a legal case. We've got a legal responsibility to provide for menopausal women. We need to be aware um, of the legal framework under the equality legislation and in particular around gender, age and disability. Um, and they're really kind of key um, reasons why we need to, to speak more openly about menopause. Um, I'm going, to, Dawn, if you want to stop sharing, I will now um, share the video that we've got. I'm just going to play a video for you. Um, second, I'm just going to find it on here. Um, okay. I have to remember to turn the volume on. Right, just bear with me one second, guys. Sorry, that's not it. I don't know why it's not come straight up.
Having fun today with uh, tech, haven't we? It's annoying. Want to send to me, Michelle, and I can have a go for you. I think it's too big. Don, can oh. you? Can you see it on your drive or not? Um, sorry, I'm just seeing what I can find. I think. Is it your lovely animated presentation? As yeah, well? yeah, it is. <laughs> I've got yeah, it here. I think, on... I think I've got. Um, oh, yeah, it's playing. I'm gonna say I can do it in it. the background. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got the YouTube link to it, so I should be able to play that. Share it. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Don't know why it's not coming up on mine. Thanks, Hopefully. Dawn. Apologies, guys. I just need to do my settings like there's now. <laughs> now as well. Yeah. Uh, it's device settings. Oh, it's that one. Can well you see done. that? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Thank the Greater you, Manchester Dawn. Wellbeing Toolkit was co-designed with colleagues from across the Greater Manchester system. It is packed with practical tools and guidance to help you to look after yourself and support those around you as a peer, team leader or line manager. The toolkit also offers an opportunity to practice having good conversations, as well as delivers a series of insight into sessions across different themes that have been flagged up, such as hybrid working, menopause, LGBTQ health inequalities, musculoskeletal and mindfulness. In this short video, we will be exploring menopause awareness, giving insight into symptoms and how it affects women in the workplace and how we can support colleagues and line managers to start the conversations and signpost to the help that is available. Menopause, it's always been around. Today, on average, women reach menopause at around 51 years old, and many women work until their late 60s. Around 3.5 million women aged over 51 years are currently employed in the UK. Eight out of 10 menopausal women are in work. This is a stage in every woman's life. It's not always an easy transition. Three out of four women have menopausal symptoms. One in four have serious symptoms. How does this affect women in work? The most common symptoms are poor concentration, brain fog, tiredness, feeling low, depressed, low confidence and hot flushes. 45% said menopausal symptoms have a negative impact on work. 47% who have needed to take time off due to menopausal symptoms said they would not tell their employer. One in four women consider leaving work because of menopause. Imagine if we lost a quarter of our female workforce aged 40 to 60, what would that do? By talking about it more openly, no more taboo and with the right help and support we can improve that and it's not just something women need to know about everyone does whether it's you personally if you're supporting your partner friend family member work colleague or if you're a line manager menopause is a stage in every woman's life and usually defined as when a woman has not had a period for 12 months. The following day is classed as menopause. Perimenopause is the time leading up to menopause when a woman may start to notice some changes. Postmenopause is the time after menopause. When we talk about menopausal women, we mean those in perimenopause or postmenopause. Menopause age usually happens between 40 to 55 but can occur up to mid-60s. 
It can also occur earlier. Naturally, 5 in 100 women menopause between 40 to 45. And in Britain, 110,000 women aged between 12 to 40 are affected by premature ovarian insufficiency. Menopause can also happen early due to surgery such as hysterectomy and certain types of cancer treatments such as chemotherapy. Our hormone levels change throughout our lives. The main ones which have an impact on menopause are oestrogen, progesterone and testosterone. Oestrogen nourishes the tissues of the body, regulates bone turnover and cholesterol, as well as keeping the liver and heart healthy. Progesterone boosts feelings of calmness, aids sleep and can help improve mood with blood sugar levels. Testosterone increases motivation and optimism, helps women to feel brighter and more assertive, increases bone density and boosts sex drive. During menopause, these hormones can be out of balance. Oestrogen levels fluctuate and progesterone levels decline, which is when a woman may start to notice symptoms. Symptoms of menopause can vary from person to person. There are a wide range from physical to psychological, such as low mood, brain fog, hot flushes, fatigue, itchy skin, poor sleep and anxiety. Every woman is different and some don't experience any major changes at all. Others will notice some symptoms and one in four will experience serious symptoms. Symptoms on average last four to eight years. Symptoms can be managed in several ways. A woman may choose to go to their GP or medical practitioner who will use the NICE guidelines to determine the treatments they will be able to offer. This includes hormone replacement therapy HRT, which can be administered by tablet, patch or gel. A GP can advise on the safety and effectiveness of HRT, if it's a good idea. Go along prepared with a history of your menstrual cycle and symptoms and for how long. Others choose a more natural approach to using complementary therapies or herbal therapies, including St. John's wort, red clover and milk thistle. Always choose a qualified herbalist or nutritional therapist for advice. Lifestyle changes can be beneficial both during and post menopause. Introducing a healthier diet, quitting smoking, reducing alcohol, taking up some kind of physical activity and introducing vitamins such as calcium and vitamin D may be helpful to mitigate some symptoms. Postmenopause health is important too. It's not just about things during the transition. Consider things like osteoporosis, cholesterol and heart disease. A GP can advise on this too. The most important thing is to understand what menopause is and choosing the right approach for you. Managing symptoms and your longer term health. Women struggling with menopausal symptoms should not feel afraid to reach out for help and support from medical practitioners, family, friends, work colleagues, wellbeing champions, line managers and HR. Ask about menopause guidance or policy within your organisation. The Greater Manchester Health and Wellbeing Toolkit is packed with helpful resources and information about menopause. It's important for everyone to talk openly about menopause. It isn't only about women, it's about everyone. Let's talk about menopause. Thanks, Dawn. Perfect, thank you so much. <laughs> Save the day. Um, yeah, if we can just go back to the slides, please. Um, we've probably got about six minutes left. Is that right, Kerry? Sorry there. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. No worries. All right. Perfect. Thanks. So we would always um, recommend um, that people go to their GP as a first point of contact if they're experiencing um, menopausal symptoms. We'll just move on, um, Dawn, from that. Just thinking of time. Yeah. Um, and you know they can give advice on what lifestyle 
changes um, can be made, you know, um, what natural remedies or treatments that, that people could try in the first instance. A line manager, a colleague, um, be able to talk to the manager if, if menopause symptoms are affecting them at work and they can discuss what kind of adjustments can be made. There's the EAP assistance program, uh, employee assistance program, which is an external organisation, totally confidential service that's available to all colleagues 24 seven. Um, it will give useful advice and offer counselling um, should it be required on the issues that might be affecting um, people at home or at work. Um, a referral that may may need to go to occupational health if you're unsure around what workplace adjustments um, can be made. OK, next slide, please. So just some examples of um, oh, we've got two minutes, <laughs> reasonable adjustments that can be made. Um, taking into account um, the, the hot flushes, you know, um, desk fans and things like that. I know there's some issue was around the infection prevention and control and that kind of put things up in the air for people, but considerations around uh, uniform and dress code. For those who have difficulty sleeping, looking at your flexible working policy and, and how you, uh, you know, informal agreements can be made in terms of um, start to finishing time, you know, earlier finishing later and all of that stuff to to account for some of that again um tiredness and fatigue for those um people that are affected with sleep problems and you know not getting a good night's sleep again if that carries on for any period of time you know yourself that you're absolutely exhausted and you can't function the same so looking at flexibility around that um, having good changing facilities and, and wash facilities uh, available um, in the working environment um, and access to sanitary products. And then um, for anxiety and, and panic attacks and things, which is often a, a really um, a, a popular symptom that, that shows up for a lot of um, ladies. It, you know, having those one to one discussions and um, knowing where to signpost to. Um, we've got 10 seconds. Uh, next slide. <laughs> We're going to get cut Michelle, off. Michelle, I was going to say, oh, sorry, you brought it up here. I was just going to say you've got those 